Rock 102.1 Mornings with Schmonty in Carolina. Uh, kind of a change of pace from our, our normal stupid news and fart humor and <laughs> bad jokes. Uh, our in-studio guest, Stephen Hildreth Jr., first of all, welcome, sir. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. And for people who might not know you by name, you are the Tucson man who's shared his experience with Tucson's police department that has just blown up all over the internet. Yeah, it, it's, it was huge. It's huge. Which... which <laughs> I'm going to say this, and I mean no disrespect in saying this. What you shared, your experience with them, really isn't that special. Because it's how police officers are supposed to interact with civilians and how civilians are supposed to interact with police officers. So for people who haven't read your post yet, why don't you go ahead and give the backstory here. Okay, I was heading down to my uh, place of work to turn in some paperwork. I've been driving on a uh, busted headlight for a little bit. And I was heading down 22nd and Kolb, heading northbound on Kolb. And I saw a Tucson police SUV turn around when they saw me. And I knew I was going to get pulled over. Like I guess I've been driving on that busted headlight for a little bit. <laughs> and uh, across the intersection, I got pulled over. And I was carrying, uh, still carrying my Glock at the time. And... I tried to get my wallet and my registration out before they uh, arrived at the window, but right. they moved up a little fast. And so I saw them move up, put my hands on the steering wheel, lower the window. They greeted me, said, how you doing? I told them I was doing all right. And then they asked me, do I have any weapons in the vehicle? And I told them, yes, sir, I'm a concealed carry permit holder. Possession of a firearm is located on my right hip. And my wallet is in my back right pocket. So I can't really get to that wallet without going past the weapon. Correct. So they're like, okay, well, for your safety and ours, uh, do you mind if we hold that weapon during the uh, duration of our stop? I told them that's fine. Uh, I unlocked the door so the uh, secondary officer on the passenger side could try to reach across and uh, relieve me of the weapon. Right. But because of the holster I was running, he couldn't really get to it. So they asked me to step out of the vehicle so they could disarm me. And I said, that's fine. Stepped out real slow. They disarmed me. I sat down. The uh, officer actually complimented me because I was running a tactical light on my pistol with an outside the waistband holster. So um, he thought it was a really cool light. <laughs> and he was like, this is really cool, man. And then um, noticed that my registration was... Uh, the card itself was out of date, but I'd already paid the fees and stuff, so he knew by running my plate that it was up to date. Okay. And uh, so, okay, we'll be right back. I'm sitting in the driver's seat going, man, I'm like, this is like the worst possible time. I'm going to have to pay for this busted headlight here. Yeah, it's like, I get ticket. That. I could get, uh, he said not to worry about the registration, so I'm okay. I, may, I shouldn't worry about that too much, but still, it's like, you're supposed to have an up-to-date card in your car, yeah. so I don't know how this is going to go. Then he returns with my Glock in the evidence bag, and the other officer has the magazine. And he goes, you know what? You were really cool with us. You didn't give us any grief about the firearm or anything like that. So we're just going to let you out for the verbal warning. And I told him, hey, thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. And then went our separate ways, continued on to the office. And once I got to my uh, place of work, I sat down and I started writing that post. Okay. And so what, why did you feel the need to share, to share that experience, which is really just sounds like a routine traffic stop? It, 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 absolutely, is, it absolutely is routine. That's like the vast majority of contact with law enforcement goes just like that. And the reason why I felt the need to share it is because you, you look at the media and it's overwhelmingly negative. They're always focusing on the negative. You rarely ever hear stories about good interactions with law enforcement. It's not because they don't happen. That's the majority of interaction with law enforcement. It's because the media is not choosing not to cover it. So I figure it's up to everyday people to sit there and cover it. And at the time, uh, my Facebook page for my uh, promotion of my books had a little following. I thought, hey, I'm proud of my less than 2,000 followers or so sure. forth. I was like, I can, I can spread the message through this, you know, get a little traction, share the story. And so that's what really the motivation behind it. Posted it, and then it blew up. It went viral fast. Yeah. Well, I, for one, I, I mean, having you on here, again, I'm not really a news show. I'm a stupid humor and music show. But it, it struck a chord with me because, like you, I see the negative posts all the time. And I'm not downplaying those actions of those officers uh, that did commit acts of police brutality. I do believe they should be punished. I do believe the victims should receive the justice they deserve or their families. But when those posts come, along comes with it, all cops are evil, all cops are bad, all cops are out to get you, and that's not the case. Absolutely. I agree 100%. And the, the other thing that I wanted to uh, post about with that contact was there's this overwhelming social narrative that if you're black and you're wearing a hoodie and you are 
pulled over by the police, they're going to try to execute you or some other such nonsense. And I'm wearing the same hoodie I'm wearing right now. I was armed. So if that narrative were true, I wouldn't be here giving this interview because that's dead to rights right there. I'm armed and there you go. But maybe that narrative is false. Maybe that's blown vastly out of proportion and the majority of cops are just decent, good people trying to do their job. Right. And I, I feel, and, and again, I said this earlier in the show, that this could be a segment that upsets some people. And, you know, again, if you want to complain about what I say, KFMA.com, my general manager's contact info is right there. I think that this is more of a respect issue. And, and it's clear because you, the officers had a respect for you as a motorist. You had a respect for them as police officers. And I think it supersedes race. I think it's respect. If, if we respect each other and treat each other how we want to be treated as human beings, there doesn't need to be this stigma because these are the individuals who, you know, when I go to work, I come in, I sit here, I drink coffee, I write bad jokes, Carolina tells me they suck, so I try to make them funnier, <laughs> and then we go on the air and we say stupid things in between songs. I don't have a terribly difficult or threatening job. These are the individuals whose career, whose, whose job path is to put themselves between me and danger. And when all of this cop hate comes out, cops are evil, cops are corrupt, cops are bad, these are people you shouldn't trust, you're putting all of their lives at risk. And that pisses me off because I grew up with a police officer across the street. A lot of my childhood friends have become police officers. My cousin's husband is a canine handler in Massachusetts. He was actually uh, the individual who, when the Boston Marathon bombings happened, he was the first canine handler on the scene going backpack to backpack, checking to see for more unexploded devices. I mean, so that, and saying all of these people who I've known my whole life, and they're good people, and I do a lot of work with the TPD. I train with a TPD officer who shares with me that his wife can't sleep until he comes home from his shift. I've done charity work with, you know, Phoenix police officers, officers in Poughkeepsie, New York, and the Hudson Valley. All good people. I've never come across a bad one. I'm not saying there aren't bad ones. There are. Absolutely. And they should be dealt with accordingly. But to, to, take, to paint with the broad stroke, all cops are, are bad, it's a, to me it's a slap in the face to all of those individuals, all of their families, who are just there to do their job and to protect us as civilians. Absolutely, and it's a thankless job. Like, they take so much flack on a daily basis, and they have to sit there and put up with it. And it's, it's, they're, they're, putting, they're putting their tails on the line for us, and they're not getting any sort of appreciation. That's why was a huge reason why I made sure to post that post, show that they are appreciated, that it's not going unnoticed. And... It's like you said, respect. Respect is a huge thing. Um, I've had several contacts uh, with TPD and other law enforcement agencies. I have a lead foot. I tend to speed a little bit. And <laughs> that, and so I'm, it's not yeah. your first time interacting it's not, with them. Yeah, not my first time. I would say I probably get pulled over once or twice every three to six months. So huh. I have I, just I, checking in, just yeah. seeing how everybody's <laughs> yeah. doing. Yeah, more or less. I, I right. have I have a lead I have a lead foot, and then also that uh, headlight has gone out before. So this is not the first time it's gone out on me. Okay. So um, I've had multiple contacts with uh, Tucson police, and every single one has been professional. I think the worst one. Like those, like okay, out of all the interactions I had, the worst one. I don't know if the uh, officer was in a bad mood or so or forth, but um, he seemed kind of grouchy. But I didn't cop an attitude with him. I didn't try to debate whatever. I explained to him I didn't see the sign. I was a, a right turn. I wasn't supposed to take a right turn, and I did. Right. And I honestly didn't see the sign. But at the end of the day, I said, "Yeah, I didn't see the sign, but hey, the sign's there, Roger. I'm not gonna debate that. I'm not gonna argue it. You do what you gotta do. It is what it is. Yeah, and." maintain respectfulness, you maintain professionalism and composure. Yeah. I got my ticket and then went our separate ways. There so you go. That's and that's worst case scenario. If you're respectful with the officer, you don't like give him any attitude and obviously if you're not like don't have any warrants out for your arrest or anything like that, that's how the overwhelming majority of your contacts are gonna go. Like worst case scenario, they're gonna give you a ticket. Okay, thank you sir, have a nice day. Continue on your day. Right. When I was when I was growing up uh, I was in my early, late teens, early 20s, and it was a Father's Day, and I got hauled down to the police station in my local town Oof. because I was suspected in, like, vandalism and theft and all, all of these crazy charges. You know, so happy Father's Day, Dad. Bring, bring me on down to the police station so I can go get, you know, investigated on all these charges. And, and I had a bad experience with that officer. He was a little overzealous, in my opinion. Uh, maybe he thought he was on a crime TV show or whatever, <laughs> you know, doing the hands pounding on the desk. <laughs> Give me 
the truth. <laughs> and, you know, it, it can't, I stuck to my story, which was the truth. I didn't do it, and it came to light, and that was the end of it. But I'm not going to go through my life harboring a grudge because that one guy decided to be an asshole. Like, he was the ass. There are other good people out there. And, and that's, going back to the original point here, that's why I wanted to bring you on. Uh, just to thank you for, for not really sharing anything special. You, sh- you shared what, <laughs> what goes on every day, and it, I just think it needs to be a reminder for people out there that the police are there to serve and to protect, and they're not there to be these big, monster, scary people uh, to you know attack and assault and all that. And, and so, you know, thank you if you are in law enforcement, or, or in your case, the armed services. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any first responder out there, you know, just yeah. thank you for what you do, because what I do is is not hard. Anybody could do this job. I I stand by that. I shouldn't say it because my GM's going really. We're paying him <laughs> way too much. Then. Well, that's... <laughs> but again, but uh, uh, Stephen, I know you've got a, a slew of other media interviews today, but I just wanted to thank you for taking the time and for coming on our show. And again. For, uh, for sharing your story. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. I hope people keep uh, sharing it because it needs to be spread. It's Rock 102.1 Morning, Schmont in Carolina.